Crossrail is coming. It's getting very close now, and they're at the phase where here, 35 metres down, they're starting to put the rails in place. Aside from the stations on the new Crossrail network, which are the obvious ways in, there are numerous other shafts all over London which allow access for construction. We entered at Fisher Street, the point where the new railway passes underneath the tube at Holborn, and got to go for a walk west along the completed tunnels through Tottenham Court Road Station and down towards Bond Street. Okay, so what we're going to do, we're going to go to, we're going to go up here, about 150, 200 metres. Crossrail is actually over 70% complete now, with the tunnelling being the brunt of the work. We were led by Greg, whose team is in charge of now putting in place the infrastructure of the railway. So we're, we're in the railway systems phase, which involves building the, the uh, concrete track slabs all the way through the tunnels, and in particular the floating track slab, which you can see behind you. And then we're also moving into the mechanical and electrical fit-out phase as well. Crossrail is actually using five different types of tracks in its tunnels, depending on the location of the tunnel with the majority of the track in the central section being formed of what is known as standard track slab. We install the track first, so once we've installed the track through the system, that then frees up the ability to move onto the track and install all of the bracketry system, all of the overhead catenary system that we need to install. We headed west, walking down the tunnels, and sooner than I expected, it opened out into one of the new stations. I'm standing in Tottenham Court Road Crossrail Station. It's just concrete now, but this here, this is the platform, and in a few years' time, your feet will be up here. We found out an interesting thing. On the Jubilee line, everybody's used to platform edge doors, PEDs as they call them. We've just been told on Crossrail, they're known as PSDs, platform screen doors. There'll be a screen that goes right up to the ceiling with no gap. On the Jubilee line, there's a tiny gap, and then the doors here will be part of the screen. But your feet will be standing here, and the platform is behind that white construction holding right now. To enable the railway system's installation, a machine known as an MPG, a multi-purpose gantry, is being used which accurately positions the sleepers and the 57 kilometres of new rails that Crossrail is putting in place. So this is the multi-purpose gantry. Um, and this is these four of these on, on Crossrail. So what we've built, these are fairly sort of expensive and they've been designed and built specifically for this project. They can't be used anywhere else because of the size of them. This is quite a clever piece of kit and what it can do is it can, it can raise itself and lower itself at will. So, and it can also, you may notice that there's a lot of hydraulics on it. What the machine is primarily used for in the rest of the network is to install all of the, the standard track slab and all the, all the rails and all the equipment. In the floating track slab area, it's primarily used to move reinforcement around and also to install a lot of the very the very heavy components that you'll see underneath you, such as the jacking chambers and the rail elements as well. We then found some rail elements ourselves, actual rail that had been laid. We're still in the tunnels 35 metres down. I'm very aware on Londonists that I get to go to some exciting places. I've been to Sewers, we've been in the National Grid Power Tunnels, and we've been in Crossrail, but this is the first time in 2016 that I actually get to touch the running rails of Crossrail. Actually, it turned out that these are just temporary rails, used to help align base plates and other equipment that will be installed here shortly, before the proper rails themselves are soon installed. Which they'll have to do soon, because test trains are coming through here next year. Well, we're, we're working towards a date in November 2017 for the first test train. So next year? As soon as next year, there might be an actual train down here. Right? Yeah, well, so these, this is what's called Zone 3. So we've split Crossrail into Zones 1, 2, 3 and 4. Zone 1 and 2 is in the eastern section from Stepney Green down to Plumstead and that's the, what we call the first dynamic testing zone. So in November 2017 you'll see the first passenger trains moving through there in a test condition. So to save us the walk back, the nice people at Crossrail have provided this vehicle for us to get a ride back in through the tunnels. The tunnels are amazing. I've said this before and I'll say it again. I don't think people, a lot of London, realise just how fantastic Crossrail is going to be. It's a brand new railway. If you want a quick overview of how it's going to work, look up here in the corner at this overview video that we made a few weeks back to see exactly where and when Crossrail is going to run. But for 35 metres underground, we're going back to the surface.